Um, so hello everybody, good morning or good evening. Um, thank you for coming to this talk. Um, so yeah, uh, originally this um, this was called DeFi and the role of maker and I am still going to talk about this, but I really do want this to be a, a back and forth. So any topic that you can think of is uh, fair game and um, we can discuss, you know, the events of uh, Black Thursday as well. Um, if you want to interrupt me at any time, please do. Um, I'm going to go over a few slides, but I want this mostly to be uh, interactive. So uh, there's that. Um, okay, so um, my name is Mariano Conti. I'm uh, the head of Smart Contracts at the Maker Foundation. Um, and uh, I want to tell you really quick, I'm not going to discuss what DAI is. I hope that almost everybody knows this by now, uh, you know, a decentralized uh, asset backed stable coin. Uh, but I want to talk about why Maker and DAI are important in the ecosystem right now and why I think they're going to remain important in the foreseeable future and why it is everybody's responsibility uh, to be as involved as they can in the project. Um, so this is a screenshot from DeFi Pulse. Uh, it represents the total value locked uh, in dollars on uh, you know the the DeFi ecosystem and maker dominance. It almost never goes below fifty percent, right? So between all of the projects that DeFi Pulse uh, registers, maker is usually uh, around fifty percent. Uh, of the value locked. And if you see the top 10, uh, you see that number two is uh, synthetics right now. And that is uh, what, like a fifth or, or less of uh, the value of maker. And if you look at the top 10, DAI is uh, a part of many of these. Uh, you know, you can loan it in Compound or uh, get a flash loan in Aave or trade it in Uniswap or interact with it using Instadap um, you know, uh, go short or long in the YDX, uh, using DAI as well. So, uh, it is a pretty important, um, stable coin that has, uh, you know, many uses in the DeFi ecosystem. And after the events of, uh, you know, March 12th and March 13, when the system was tested as it had really never been tested before, um, in my opinion, I think the the system and the community came out uh, stronger on the other side. Um, we're seeing once again that the total supply of uh, dye is uh, rising again. It uh, had dipped to around seventy five million. Now it's uh, it's on its way to ninety million again. Uh, one of the things that happened uh, because of uh, you know the markets crashing was that uh, USDC was added as a collateral for um, for creating DAI. And a lot of people said, wait, but if this is a decentralized stablecoin, why do you have a centralized uh, asset, you know, that can be blacklisted? Uh, USDC is an ERC-20 that does indeed have a blacklist. Um, and I would ar argue that there is a difference between having a centralized asset in the maker protocol, uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that the maker protocol is itself centralized because, uh, this is an asset that was added to the system in a decentralized manner, um, discussed by the community voted, uh, by the MKR community. And we're probably going to see more of these as we, uh, expand the asset portfolio of maker and we try to make DAI more resilient. If we had had, uh, you know, many more assets in the maker protocol when the markets crashed, um, if more of these assets had been uh, non-correlated with each other, then um, probably the uh, effects wouldn't have been uh, as, uh, you know, as drastic as they were just because uh, maybe when something uh, is going down, another asset is staying stable or going up. Um, even though, you know, w what we saw uh, with the effects of, you know, coronavirus and the oil price wars, uh, it was pretty much 
something that you see maybe once or twice in a generation, right? Uh, this was a defining moment. And the fact that the protocol survived, and uh, in fact, now the system is once again uh, generating surplus. This number, uh, 4,534, you can go to diestats.com uh, and, uh, and see this. Uh, after Black Thursday, the system incurred around 5.3 million die of debt. So uh, it needed to recover more than $5 million worth of die um, because there were, uh, you know, vaults that were liquidated and with the congestion, uh, some of those vaults, um, the auctions were won uh, by, you know, essentially zero bidding. And uh, the system had to inflate MKR, had to create MKR out of thin air and sell it in the open market, which it did. And it slowly recovered those 5 million. And now we're back on track. Yes, this, uh, this sucked. This is not something that anybody wanted, right? It's uh, when the system is working properly, um, this number goes up because of, you know, stability fees and uh, liquidation penalties. And, uh, and it wasn't that great to see, uh, all that work that, that the system, uh, you know, had accrued the uh, surplus over the years and then, uh, had to go into the negative. But one of the reasons why I think we're coming out stronger because of this is that, um, we're finally accelerating. I mean, this is something that uh, has been coming for a while, but now I think the community is taking this more seriously because um, the Maker Foundation, uh, as was stated in the white paper and, and elsewhere, the idea of the foundation is that it'll one day no longer be needed, right? Because that's where the DAO comes from in Maker DAO. The, the role of the foundation is to bootstrap the system and then dissolve, step away. It's uh, uh, what I like to say is that, yeah, I, if I'm out of a job in two years, that's a good thing, right? Because um, what me and some, uh, some others, we want to get paid if we can, because um, we need to see what the role of uh, foundation members will be in the future, right? But uh, the idea is that the protocol itself will pay uh, people to do work for the protocol, right? So the foundation is set to dissolve in around two years. And I want to discuss real quick the, the path to full decentralization, right? And what's coming uh, in the next few months, and some things are coming uh, faster than others, are uh, the three pillars are elected pay contributors, uh, maker improvement proposals and vote delegates. So let me discuss uh, the first one, which is really cool. This uh, this will be people who are, like I said, they're paid by the protocol in Dai, whether it be hopefully from surplus, but can also be uh, from debt. So the system can either take uh, Dai that it already has when uh, when the system is working in the green, or it can incur a debt because it needs to pay, you know, either oracles or risk teams or people from the community. And what's great is that over the years, a lot of community members have been more and more involved um, in, you know, um, in creating uh, polls for, uh, you know, risk parameter changes or working on collateral onboarding um, on many other different things. And these are you know, these are great professionals that uh, deserve to be paid for their time, right? And <clears throat> even though they're not part of the foundation, they're the most important members because, um, you know, they grew up, they uh, were spun up organically from the community and they deserve to be paid and they're going to be paid by the protocol itself. It's like, um, this is going to take, of course, uh, a lot of coordination, but we expect this to start happening really soon. And anybody can start working for, uh, you know, the maker protocol and put ideas forward. And if they're good and the community accept them, they will, they will start getting paid. 
Um, the second that is really important is something called the Maker Improvement Proposal or MIPS. And this is analogous to, you know, Ethereum Improvement Proposals or, or EIDs. I'm, I think that tomorrow, if tomorrow is April 6th, which I think it is, I believe tomorrow there's going to be a lot more uh, announced uh, on this regard. But really, uh, we're going to try to make uh, this a lot more um, standardized and have a good process for how to expand and change the maker protocol, right? Um, whether this be adding new collateral or, um, you know, changing the way auctions work maybe or anything uh, else that can be thought of. And even this kind of thing, there's probably going to be a, a meta MIP to introduce this uh, MIPs, right? And so be on the lookout for that because um, this is something that the community really has to step up and, and be part of. Um, and I expect uh, MIPS to be a good way for uh, a lot of people to just uh, join and, and start working on making uh, Maker better. And the final one is vote delegation. And here, I, I want to say that I'm a little bit disappointed because there have been voting on the Maker protocol for over two years. And I really, really thought that that by now there would be a, a community effort to do something like this. Um, there's ways you can do it at the smart contract level that are really not that complicated. The, the complicated part comes not from the technology from, but from the social side. And I know that that is where, uh, Ethereum communities excel, right? At the, at the, at the social part where uh, we create communities, we, uh, we organize and talk to each other. This is where vote delegation is going to be the most important because um, at the smart contract level, it's just, you know, delegating uh, your tokens to a contract that all it can do is vote um, on proposals and nothing else. Nobody can move your uh, tokens around. But the idea behind vote delegation is to enable smaller MKR holders, um, you know, to organize and to make their voices heard. And this is really important because not a lot of people vote right now in the system. Um, and if, if you want to think about it, the system could mostly be managed by two or three whales. So that is not the, the point of the system or, or the ideology behind it. And if you can get a hundred people to delegate their MKR to somebody who is paid by the protocol, maybe, and uh, who understands the system and takes time to go to every governance meeting and read the forum posts and have like an informed decision when voting, um, that is going to be one of the most disruptive things that, that we can have, right? You know, fighting the whales and fighting the power. And I, so this is something that the foundation still plans to do internally, but if anybody wants to come up with, uh, this is like my call to action. If anybody does some kind of vote delegation, uh, that comes from the outside and it's just like a grassroots movement, that would be, uh, amazing. And that's where I want to stop with the slides because, um, really if there's still people <laughs> listening on this call, I just want, um, I just want to do a back and forth and I want people to ask me questions if they can about why I think. Uh, you know, the dice table coin is important, or we can discuss, you know, the events of Black Thursday, or we can talk about why I think adding USDC was a good idea, even though it has a, you know, a blacklist and it, I think it's only like 4% of the, the total supply of die created. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here and ready to answer questions, please do we still have somebody here? Let me see. Yeah, there's a couple of people. Nice. Yes, sure. Can I start? Yeah. So this is Stefan. Um, uh, do you have any any um, idea or hypothesis why uh, the voting participation is is not that high? I mean, 
we, we see this all across the space yeah? and, and and basically every every voting mechanism suffers from the problem but what do you think are the most important factors for this um yeah i can give you i can give you what i think even though i um i mean i've looked at some of the the voting data uh, so i i have some idea but really mostly um one big thing is just that it's a pain in the ass to vote once every week. Um, with single collateral die, we had one vote every two, three weeks or every month. And, and we saw, even though we still saw low participation, some people were excited to start, you know, voting and, and having a voice in the system and deciding, um, you know, everything, the parameters, etc. cetera. With, uh, with MCD, you know, it's a it's a chore being an MKR holder. Um, you need to go to a meeting every Thursday, uh, discuss a whole bunch of things. Uh, you know, you need to know the the state of the peg is die trading above one dollar, below one dollar. Then uh, on Mondays, uh, polls go out, and you need to read and understand why uh, people are voting on one thing or another. Um, then on Friday, you need to do the actual vote. And a lot of people just don't have time for that. And they don't have time to go to the forums and read. Uh, the maker forums lately have been one of the greatest uh, sources of discussion and information around. And they're mostly handled by the community now. And, uh, you know, this is a this is a big thing. It's um, it's complicated to, you know, uh, aside from everything that happens in real life to have to uh you know take all of these things into consideration so that is why i i mentioned the that vote delegation is going to be a thing because even if we make it so simple to vote we realize that it's not it's not practical for so many people to do it and and then just the fact that a lot of people just don't have a lot of mkr and they feel like their vote is not going to be meaningful against something like an a16z voting or you know a paradigm or a dragonfly um that's why yeah probably if it's one person with a fraction of a of, of an mkr it's probably not going to be relevant but if they can pull it along with 100 or 200 other people then it is going to become significant thank you are, are a16 set and and paradigm actually voting I've, I think I've not seen that uh, active, right? I, that's a great question. I think A16C voted once with one MKR to, uh, to test the system. And I don't know if they voted again after, but I'm pretty sure Paradigm did vote on one of the big ones. Maybe, um, which one did we have? Uh, probably the one to unlock the the remaining debt auctions. These were uh, the auctions last week, where the system auctioned off MKR um, in return for die, so it could uh, um, it could uh, you know recoup the last of the of the system debt that it had. But uh, I need to double check. And and if they're not voting now, then uh, it's going to be even more problematic if they start voting in the future and we do not have vote delegation because uh, they're essentially gonna be controlling the protocol. And this is not also too much of a bad thing because when you when you have voting per token, you have a plutocracy, right? And, and not a, a one person, one vote democracy, which, I mean, that's the way the system is designed. It's not, I'm not gonna uh, argue the merits or demerits of a plutocracy, but it's, it's just the way governance works, but at least you can try to uh, fight it off a little bit. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I am not sure I have understand uh, correctly from uh, Maker. Uh, are there any collaterals that are uh, off chain, like uh, you know, physical assets? Uh, there are none right now in the system. 
so the only the only collaterals right now are uh, of course ether and there's basic attention token and uh, lately usdc and <clears throat> there's a special fourth collateral there is a uh, psi a single collateral die that can be used just to migrate from one system to the other but um at the moment there is nothing that represents an asset in the real world but of course that is one of the goals okay. um yeah is there, have you designed any process to achieve this goal uh, for for ways that we can onboard uh stuff from the real world as as collateral in the yeah. system yeah uh yeah um well not necessarily uh you know, real, real real world assets, but just uh, new collateral in general. Yeah, there's a there's a collateral onboarding process, and that already exists uh, at the forum.makerdao.com. And this process was not created by the foundation; it was actually created by the community, and um, and it details a whole bunch of steps that uh, you know any project that is working on something that could be uh, worthy of inclusion in the maker protocol that uh, they have to fill out and you know have to discuss the merits uh, of something like this you know all of this in in the end everything requires on-chain governance right uh, it requires carefully crafted uh, we call them spells to interact with the system but it all begins uh, off-chain with this kind of discussion and yeah you can you can look at it and Personally. I have a third question. Can I do it, please? Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Yeah. Uh, one of one of the it, it's about the uh, culture vector. Yes. Uh, actually, basically, the the DAO, the DAO is uh, uh, under uh, value uh, is uh, is uh, the collateral is much higher than the uh, borrowed assets, yes? Yeah. Okay. My question is uh, about the culture of the of the people using the DAO. I mean, coming out of this uh, austerity and financial crisis, uh, for me, it was a surprise that uh, MakerDAO had this um, uh, trajectory, yes? So uh, I, I was wondering if uh, you have ever thought about this uh, uh, culture and how 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 wh wh why is this success? I mean, basically. Um, I mean, let me see if I understand the question. Um, you're saying why do you think there's die adoption successful? So oh, uh, well, I I gave a talk at DevCon five about uh, like a very personal talk about how uh, I live in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and we have over 50% inflation and we have capital controls. And and here, uh, DAI has been, you know, extremely well received and we already have a, uh, you know, a growing economy of people who are just, you know, fighting the system in Telegram groups and WhatsApp and doing OTC trading and, uh, you know, foregoing banks uh, altogether. I think in places uh, like my country and others, where we use DAI as a means of survival, not just, uh, you know, to go long ether or to speculate on uh, on the market. We we really use it as, as you know, a payment system. And um, I I don't want to speak for anybody but myself, but uh the fact that it was a decentralized stablecoin um that's what entices me it's um i i really do not trust central banks uh, or governments uh i saw my grandparents they died without access to their life savings and and the promise of uh, an unbiased currency just uh, um it just speaks to me right and i think it speaks to a lot of people um, I, uh, can I also ask about uh, the events? Uh, hey, 
Um, so the problem has been mitigated, right, because of uh, this patch and issuance. But the root of the problem is um, why did it happen? Because of uh, the stress, and is it solved now? Now do the smart contracts have to be upgraded, or can you explain? Yeah, sure. Uh, you're talking about uh, March 12th, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I can talk a little bit uh, technically what happened. Um, <clears throat> so this was really a, a perfect storm of uh, things happening all at once, right? And I want to say that I don't think any protocol uh, was not impacted by this, you know, and also centralized exchanges like uh, I think BitMEX, they uh, they pulled the plug on their liquidation system. Otherwise, uh, you know, things could have been a lot worse for Bitcoin, for example, and then it would have uh, would have taken most of the other crypto assets down as well. Uh, so, okay, let me tell you how the liquidation system works uh, in Maker. Um, let's say you. So in order to create DAI, you need to lock a valuable asset, let's say Ether in this case, right? And you need to keep it at least 150% collateralized. So if you put in uh, $150 worth of Ether, which um, it should be almost one Ether now, right? At uh, the current prices. But let's say if Ether is at 150 and you put one Ether, you can borrow $100 of DAI. Um, and as long as uh, the price of ether is uh, remains above uh, this, then you're you're fine. But of course, a lot of people do not put in just uh, uh, 150. They try to collateralize more, 200, 300 percent, just to be safe. Um, so maybe they put in 200 dollars worth of ether, and they only borrow 100 worth of die, and they're 200% collateralized. Um, what happened during uh, that Thursday is that the price of Ether dropped extremely quickly. And what it did was first, it uh, made a lot of vaults, you know, what used to be called CDPs, a lot of vaults became under collateralized. So uh, the system, we, uh, there's keepers running um, constantly that try to look for arbitrage opportunities, they uh, they liquidated a whole bunch of bolts and that triggers auctions. So the system says, okay, let's say you borrowed a hundred die and now you're under collateralized and you're liquidated. The system first tax uh, a 13% penalty. So if you owed a hundred now, the system tries to recover 113 with the amount of collateral that you had. Let's say you had one Ether. So the system auctions off one Ether trying to get back 113 DAI. But let's say the price of Ether keeps dropping. So uh, keepers bid on your, uh, on your one Ether of collateral, and maybe they bid somebody's 90 DAI for all of that. And maybe somebody bids 95 uh, maybe somebody bids a hundred and that's it. Uh, if the system recovers a hundred, then um, it cancels out the bad debt and there's nothing left. Uh, there's no collateral left to give you. Uh, the problem that happened on Thursday is that the system was so congested that like we saw transactions going at 300 uh, guay or more that first off, a lot of people who wanted to save their vaults, they either tried to put in more collateral or pay off their debt. They just couldn't do it because they couldn't get a transaction in fast enough. Uh, also, what happened is a lot of the keeper software, some of uh, some of that still, it, they also couldn't put in transactions to vote on, on these auctions or to bid on them. And then to make matters worse, there were a couple of keepers that were bidding the minimum amount uh, on these auctions and winning, which is, uh, you know, they could bid like one way. And a lot of people say that this is badly designed, but the way auctions are designed, they, they have to allow for zero uh, or next to zero bids 
because you don't know what's going to happen with with a collateral if the price the price could theoretically go to zero and then you need to allow uh, vaults to be liquidated for next to nothing in the case of ether of course this was not the uh, the right approach because uh like i said the price did not drop to zero but network congestion made it so that uh other keepers could not put in bids uh, at once and then we did see a lot of collateral be uh be liquidated for close to zero so some of the things that were mitigated is uh first off now auctions last a lot longer they last six hours uh and this is also a risk because you may not have a lot of people bidding on collateral if it lasts six hours so if i make a bid now i take on risk for the next six hours that the price is not gonna go down more than what i'm bidding on uh so it's really it's a juggling act between uh you know putting risk parameters that are good and healthy in case of you know network congestion uh but also that it makes sense that you have keepers that can actually make some money of the system otherwise nobody's going to run them and and the system doesn't work if you don't have uh you know robots out, out there doing bidding and and making the system healthy and did i answer some of those questions i can i can go into more detail on on more if you need me for me it's great i i learned there is no special bug it's just uh like you said juggling the correct parameters and more or less it's a unusual situation and it's uh, maybe even great as the way oh happens. yeah and and there's a couple of things that i forgot to to talk about but but yeah the uh, there was no bug in the smart contract uh really so the system worked as intended the problem is that yeah uh, since the network was so congested there was no way for other bidders to put in their bids and, and uh but also one thing that happened was there was no liquidity uh that's why we also saw the price of die rise to like 1.1 dollars um a lot of people needed die to pay off their debt but there was not too much die uh in in the markets right uh so one of the things that the community did was you know uh, they voted the die stability uh, the die savings rate down to zero so people removed their die from the system and put it in the market but also that was when usdc was voted in as a collateral right uh that was mostly to avoid having a liquidity crunch in the future because um you know you can always create now you can create an amount of dive from usdc uh it has a very high stability fee so the idea is to mostly do that during times of liquidity crunches so you create dive from usdc you use it and then you pay it back um in this case yeah there was so much uh, there were so many liquidated vaults um that there just wasn't enough die around to uh to bid on them mm -hmm. and yeah there's a lot of things that are coming to alleviate this um we, we are going to be discussing along with the community maybe a redesign of the auctions but this is this is like a ways away uh first off the idea is to get as many people as possible running these keepers uh, in order to if they can arbitrage and make some money from the system but there is also a problem here uh, you can have an open source keeper running and trying to make money but nobody wants to give away their strategies to make money on the blockchain so the foundation can make a keeper and give it away but it's hard that it's going to be better than, you know, closed source uh, software that is running out there. But, uh, I mean, we can try. Um, I just have a, a, an additional uh, question. Now, the only, uh, so how this was mi mitigated, that maker, maker holders um, got a little bit diluted, uh, which is okay, right? Yeah. Because they're the first front. Could something else have happened that uh, would bring um for example die holders more in danger or is is the system seems robust in this way that 
always the maker holders uh, take the hit when something like this happens. Um, the, yeah, the uh, the idea is that uh, MKR holders are uh, the, the the backstop, right? The lenders of last resort. So in this case, we saw the system working properly in that there was debt, and uh, you needed to raise die to raise it. And and the way that it happened was uh, with MKR dilution. Um, I'm th uh, so for die holders, they're they're mostly protected. The only way I can think of is that if the system is shut down and there's a lot of uh, bad debt in the system, then there would, if the system is shut down, there will not be enough collateral to, you know, redeem one die for one dollar worth of collateral. But this is this would have to be an extreme situation. So in the case of the events of uh, Thursday, <clears throat> I heard some people say that the system was under collateralized. This is oh. this is not true. The system stayed over collateralized. Um, what was under collateralized was a number of vaults. And even though it was a significant number because a lot of them were liquidated, the system overall was still um, over collateralized, right? So in that case, if the system would have been shut down, um, I think it would still wouldn't have been enough uh, to, you know, uh, make the the die holders have to take a haircut. So, what was an emergency shutdown actually ever uh, discussed? Um, it was it was discussed. Yeah, um, if you go to if you go to the forums, or you there's video and transcripts of the governance calls um very so it was discussed during the events um and yeah it was discussed the following week um it is it is always a possibility uh, emergency shutdown but the good thing is that the system responded well enough that that it wasn't needed uh, the thing with emergency shutdown is that, well, it has the word emergency there, right? That that doesn't help. Um, there are a lot of ways when we would want to shut down the system gracefully without having to call it an, an emergency, uh, you know, when doing an upgrade or, or something of the sort. Um, in this case, yeah, it would have been because of an emergency. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, I know a lot of people discussed it, and like I tell you, you can look at, at the transcripts from the calls. But luckily, it didn't. It didn't come to that in this case. But I expect in the future, uh, for shutting down a die system and creating a new one, to not be that big of a deal, because that is why I think of it almost as a hard fork. It's like uh once the community gets like better at doing that it will be just migrating from one system to the other and if we have the proper tools it would be you know minimal um you know minimal overhead if i don't know if anybody else doesn't have a question then uh i I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit about the future maybe the shards and is it going to be in one chart? Is the new um, logic eight charts, not 64? Are you thinking about this already? Uh, so yes, yeah, um, we are to some extent. So uh, my team, the, the smart contracts team, we had a call maybe last month uh, with, the, with the Ethereum 2.0 team and so we have all of those avenues of communication open. I, I myself try to be part of uh, every single uh, Discord or uh, or forum that discusses changes to Ethereum because I, uh, yeah, the Maker needs to be ready first off for Ethereum one one point X, whatever that may end up being. Uh, you know, we're gonna have stateless. 
uh, stateless Ethereum soon, and um, the smart contracts need to be, you know, ready for that because uh, we're going to see gas cost increases in many different things. And in the case of Ethereum too, as well, um, yeah, we don't know yet exactly how this is going to look. Ideally, we wouldn't want to have the maker protocol in one shard because that would probably mean that a lot of the other projects would start moving to the same shard. Uh, so this instead would need to be a re-architecturing of most of the system so that it can live parallel in many different shards uh, and maybe have, uh, you know, die in all of them that is fungible with like die mm. on one shard, fungible with die on the other. So it's hardcore. Uh, if this approach is taken, it's um, like uh, not easy to move to be present in all shards. Of course, as async, async comes into play. Mm. Uh, something else I just wanted, but forgot. Um, maybe later. If can I, can I jump in because I think we have a very interesting question on the on the Discord channel and on sure. The Interesting for me. Um, so, uh, Balto, do, do you want to uh, ask yourself or um, shall I just read it? <laughs> um, the question is about compensating the, the people who, who lost um, their vaults in, in that event, right? I mean, um, I've been also yeah. following those discussions a lot and I know that there is a lot of discussion going on. As, as far as I understand, the, the current notion is rather not to compensate, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe, maybe you can elaborate a bit on that. Yeah. Um, I have not followed the latest. Uh, everything everything related to that is is happening in the forums, uh, forum.makerdao.com. And it's the community itself that is, uh, that is discussing this. Um, I think, yeah, the, they've been having polls uh, saying, okay, what should be done? Um, there's still analysis waiting to to be done that uh, that I'm sure is going to happen hopefully soon, because uh, there's there's a lot of things in play here, and I, uh, I mean, I don't want to take sides one way or the other. Like, um, I'm going to wait until the community figures it out, and then uh, the protocol will do. Uh, what the MKR community decides, right? But um, so coming coming back to the example, because uh, there's a lot of people that I don't think understand again how the how the liquidation system works. Because I've seen people saying, "Hey, I my vault got liquidated, and I want a hundred percent of my collateral back." Right? Um, if we go by the numbers that I said, let's say you put in one ether worth 150 and you borrow 100 uh, DAI, if, this, if the price drops considerably, let's say the price drops, uh, what happened uh, during that Thursday? Uh, I don't remember what the price was, but it dropped, what, like 50, 40%, 30% in an hour. Um, if you add, let's say you, you had 100 DAI and you add 13 as the penalty and the asset i don't know is worth 120 uh and it's still dropping if the system recovers uh that 113 and um and the uh and it is worth uh, 120 maybe you get seven die back uh seven dice worth of ether back as collateral from your 150 that you put in uh, right, so that's what seven, like five percent. Um, I think that first the system, uh, you know, the community would need to do an analysis of every vault that was liquidated and figure out uh, how much they maybe would have received back. And once that happens, you know, there should be a an MKR vote. To see if uh, if they decide on compensation or not, I uh, I honestly, like I said, I don't want to take a position either way, but uh, I do like the fact that uh, it is the community themselves that are 
that are discussing this? Um, I mean, obviously, we, we, we have some interrelations here and we also have to consider the, the vault owner's behavior here, right? So yeah. the, the example that, that Polto is giving in the Discord is um, he basically he basically used um, the die from his vault to buy ETH and, and um, put them into the vault. Yeah? So in, in his opinion, yeah, he really lost everything. He lost all his ETH and all the die from, from this event. And the question, yeah. um, so, so his question is, I can read it for you. Uh, I'd like to understand if you do or do not consider this to be a buggy behavior, or is it normal behavior that we should expect in the future too? And, and maybe to add on that, there is also another community, the, the Nexus Mutual community, which I'm, I'm yeah. sure you are aware of. Um, and, and in this community, there was a lot of discussion and I, I was also involved in this discussion, um, whether or not this should be uh, uh, considered intended usage of the smart contract, right? Mm -hmm. And the mutual community came to the conclusion, um, for those who are unaware, um, Nexus Mutual kind of offers uh, insurance against um, such events. And um, in this case, they, they came to the conclusion not to pay out yeah, because the smart contracts worked as intended, right? If they were used as intended, it's a, it's a different question, but... Um, so, so I, I would really like to, to hear your opinion on this. If, if can, can users, can vault owners expect something similar to happen in the future again? Or what are the mitigations put in place now? I would say that now it is probably less likely for some, for something like this to happen just because, um, the keeper software is now better and we know that there are more keepers running and as as more people get into the ecosystem to uh, try to take advantage of these auctions, uh, if we see a healthier um, keeper ecosystem, then that'll be one way to uh, to mitigate this. The other is that uh, a lot of the risk parameters changed. So now, uh, like I tell you, auctions take uh, a longer time. So even if uh, the network is congested, um, keepers still have a lot more time to bid uh, on these auctions so they um um yeah that is also uh, one thing that uh, that mitigates this having usdc as collateral is also a step that was taken uh, to mitigate this uh because you can generate more die in case of a liquidity crunch and there's probably something else that we did that uh, i'm not remembering but what do you think about the, the, the role of oracles here? As, as I remember, there was also some problem with, with the oracle um, not reflecting. Actually, right? yeah. It I, was actually good because it, it did not, yeah. um, um, it, it did not uh, lead to even more vaults becoming liquidated, right? Well, actually, uh, oracles, just like everything else that they, they were having uh, a hard time sending transactions to update, right? And the way the maker oracles work is that they queue up the price. So price is always delayed by one hour. Uh, so what happened is that, um, I, mean, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but, but let's say that the price was 150 and it was going down to 130 or, or something. Uh, the price, you knew what the next price was gonna be because that's the way the system works. The system tells you Okay, in one hour, the price is going to be this. So people knew that the price was going to go down. And when it was time for the oracles to update and actually switch uh, to that price, the system was so congested that uh, the oracles took a while to update. So this actually helped vault owners because uh, anybody, if the price was 150 and it's it was going to go down to 130. Anybody that was below 150 was going to be liquidated. Uh, but they actually had some extra time to try to save their vaults because the oracles took uh, longer to um, to update, right? And yeah, uh, in this case, it was uh, helpful for, for vault owners, but uh, we also have some things in place now to make sure that the oracles update quicker. Uh, we've made updates to the to the... Uh, the Oracle software. So it takes into account more, uh, you know, gas during extreme network congestion. 
Um, if if I may add my my personal opinion here, so I, Please. Think, I think one of the one of the uh, big problems in this event, and and I've also been following that discussion from the from the angle of um, a keeper pool that is that is going to be um, or, or that people are discussing um, as, a, as a as a community effort, um, trying to to mitigate such events in the future. So um, I think one problem was um, I, uh, the defaults in the in the keeper bot. Yeah? So basically that the that the gas price was so so unflexible, and mm -hmm. um, and another problem. Um, the the interfaces to even follow the auctions. Yeah, if you if you um, remember die auctions, for example. Yeah, yeah. It really took a long time to even to even update um, uh, to the current state and and until this was loaded. And I, I fully agree with you. I think the maker community is now much much stronger with regards to tooling, with regards to interfaces, and and also the auction interface on the web. Um, I mean, it's it looks so much better now <laughs> with the with the debt auction than it was before um uh, with the collateral auctions so i i agree that that in a sense um it's actually a strong argument for maker um that the community has has reacted so well and and the system was able to recover so quickly um i, I would like to come back to this emergency shutdown question and and get your personal feeling on how how far away were we from an emergency shutdown? And and you you said before that in a sense we we want um, to to get this to, to this to become uh, less um, threatful in a sense, right? So so what? How far away were we? Uh, well, the thing that I said that uh, emergency shutdowns sometimes shouldn't be a disruptive thing. Uh, I meant that just for updates, right? So let's say uh, the system needs to update to a new version and uh, we're not there yet in the case that we can shut down one system and spin up another one uh, or have one that's already up and, and do uh, a transition and migration from one to the other. But uh, that's what I meant. In the case of during those events, um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I know that uh, a lot of people in the community were discussing it, the people in chat, they were saying, hey, we should shut down, we should shut down, as to how close were we, I'm not exactly sure. So, you know, emergency shutdown can be triggered with just 50,000 MKR. Yes. Uh, but you, you need to be ready to have that burned, right? So there is an emergency shutdown module that people can send MKR to it, and that MKR is destroyed, but if it gets 50,000 of it, it'll instantly shut down the system. This is a, a protection from you know anybody. Let's say governance puts in a vote to steal all of the collateral. Uh, the community can gather 50,000 MKR. That's why vote de delegation is so important. And they can stop the system and say, no, uh, like this is not good. And then... This would be a painful process, but yeah, uh, it, it would freeze the system and then uh, the community would need to figure out uh, following steps, right? And this did I, not happen, right? There was not- No, 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 this, this didn't happen, yeah. I I think I'm I'm out of time. I, I don't know if I had until 11 or 10.50. But... Yeah, you can keep talking until 11. Oh, awesome. So we have a, a few extra minutes to keep discussing this or thank, or thank you Marianne. Else. I think I think you are doing a wonderful job here. So thank you. Oh thank you. Thank you so much.